I grew up with this idea, or at least I was told, that police are here to protect us. And I think that a lot of the conversations you're seeing across the country are basically asking the question, well, wow, police are here to protect us. Why does it seem like at least a lot of communities feel like that's not happening? See, how long is this program? <laughs> this is David Cooper, a retired Wisconsin police chief with over 30 years of experience. He's been on the front line fighting for change inside police departments for years now. Well, should we start at uh, slave patrols? Yep, that was slave, slave patrols. Slave patrols were an organized group of armed white men who would monitor and enforce discipline upon black slaves in the 1800s. And then, and then that kind of morphed into Jim Crow. And it was quite, quite obvious about whose side the police were on. I mean, <laughs> there wasn't any question. If you, if you were a person of color and you had a beef about, about how a white person or a store owner or, or somebody who treated to you, forget about it. You know, you're going to jail. My name is Chinjirai Kumanika, and I'm an assistant professor in Rutgers Department of Journalism and Media Studies. You know, what you have to understand is that in the early, in the early America, right, a lot of the wealth was made. I mean, the wealth was basically made by exploiting labor. And so in the South, in places where slavery was, you know, um, the economic system, that meant you're exploiting slave labor. What you see is, from the beginning, these departments have kind of a racist function. I see a lot of people, you know, kind of talking about this and they'll say, well, you know, our police are broken, but we have to reestablish trust. The question I would say is, okay, but if the police are broken, what year in American history did the police break? If you're talking about reestablishing trust, can you point to the year in American history where there was a foundation of trust between the black community, for example, and police officers? Are you going to are you going to say that there was trust between the black community during Jim Crow in the 20s? But you know, a lot of police officers have found it hard actually to do that job. Well, well, it's always been tense. When I when I worked on the street in Minneapolis, I after Dr. King was slain. And the north side of Minneapolis was most of the businesses were burned and looted. Um, I decided we had to do something different. I was just a patrol officer at the time. Uh, I went to the captain of my station, the north side station, and I said, I, I think we should put a footbeat down in the black community. And I said, I, I want ex an exemption to one department rule. I, I don't want to have to wear my hat this summer uh, because I want people to know who I am. And if I wear my hat, somebody might shoot me thinking I was one of those other officers. David did see a change. He was able to connect with local citizens on a personal level. He realized that by showing respect, he would receive it back in return. Nobody wants to live in a, in a, in a crime, crazy ridden neighborhood. Everybody wants that. And so, so as my trust and support came, well then I got a lot of information about, about crime. And I think I did a, you know, a really affects the job. That was the first of many efforts David would make to bridge the gap between the black community and the police department. Years later, David would be at the center of a culture shift with other departments around the country taking notice. And it all started with a uniform change. So the blazer uniforms worked excellently. It was well, well, uh, well received by the public. We got, uh, we got an article in Newsweek magazine about, <laughs> about what we were doing and, um, and the you know, the idea just um, just caught on. There was there there was not a a military uniform available. That was the only. It was consisted of a blue blazer and a, you know shirt and a tie. And then that became that was the standard. You could have whatever color tie you wanted. The blazer had the police department you know emblem on the pocket. Uniforms were controversial when they were introduced. Police officers weren't into uniforms, but what they recognized with uniforms is that they offered police officers a kind of prestige and a kind of sort of seeming official. You know, so it just didn't seem like just, you know, some dudes from around the way coming to arrest, <laughs> coming to arrest you, you know. Now we see surveillance technology and of course we see military weaponry. You had that kind of equipment, that kind of war and mentality. You go into a community, you may see yourself as there to serve the people, but the community is not gonna see you that way. And I think that, you know, that's a, that's a real problem if we're trying to rebuild trust. Now, again, I wouldn't use the word rebuild trust because I can't point to a point when there was trust, but I can certainly say that rolling into the community like you're an occupying force, tear gas with tear gas, rubber bullets, tanks, that certainly is 
worsening trust. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to change this, the, the police on the state level. Standards boards, everything, and it's impossible to do it nationally. But good people can get together on, you know, cities and counties and townships and say, we're gonna we're gonna with the, we're gonna work with the police to make them better. It's one hand make a, a community that's more robust with social programs, so you need less institutions for public safety, and at the same time create an economy where all those people who are currently employed as police officers can find other ways to really help. And I think that's the solution. Over the years, there have been attempts to change the culture inside law enforcement, as well as efforts to bridge the gap between them and the community, but many have fallen short. Today, David believes this is the tipping point to the fight he's been battling for decades. Hey everyone, Cody Broadway here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out the NBCLX YouTube channel. Be sure to click here for more videos and also click here to subscribe to join the NBCLX community.